Dingai Fusion Records Chapter 17 Secret Room Chen Xing said, This is a faded arrangement, it's not up to you whether you want to be a protector or not. See? Because of a strange combination of circumstances, you're destined to investigate this matter with me, why you you, what are you trying to do again? Try hitting me again and see. Xiang Shu stood up, and Chen Xing backed up right away and thought, even rabbits would bite when they get anxious. Yet Xiang Shu did not threaten him at all. When he walked to stand in front of Chen Xing, he cast a sidelong look at Chen Xing. Gyu Wang hates being deceived the most, Xiang Shu said coldly, as long as you do not deceive me, you will be able to keep your life. When he heard the words Gyu Wang, Chen Xing suddenly realized a serious problem Tha the has never noticed before Xiang Shu was the great Chan Yu, that is, he was the king beyond the Great Wall and was theoretically on equal footing with the Central Plains overlord, Fujian. Perhaps it was because he had formed the habit after they were constantly on the move the whole way here, but Chen Xing had never treated Xiang Shu as the Great Chan Yu, and he didn't pay attention to what he says in front of him either, unlike with Fujian. Now that he thought about it, this guy was a man of his word. But Chen Xing could not help but try to gain an advantage with words. If you hit me again, once I get my mana back. Chen Xing said bitterly, I will definitely take revenge, and I'll kill you then. After he spoke, he immediately backed up a little, if Xiang Shu tried to hit him, he would start yelling and run back to the imperial study to beg Fujian for help. I'll wait. Xiang Shu only said this coldly, he waited for Chen Xing to catch up and frowned, you're still not leaving. Chen Xing felt doubtful for a moment, then snapped out of his stupor. Xiang Shu wanted to investigate the matter related to the exorcism department, so he would follow along while keeping a certain distance. Chen Xing saw Xiang Shu turn out of the garden and arrive in front of the palace hall. Great Chen Yu has arrived. The guards by the door quickly reported to the one inside. This place was Princess King He's sleeping chambers. They saw Princess King He sitting down in an indolent manner, and there were several Zion Bay girls beside her who appeared both quiet and elegant they should be the daughters of aristocratic Zion Bay families. As soon as they saw Xiang Shu, all the girls suddenly laughed and stood up one after another to greet him. Great Chan Yu! Don't harbor any wishful thinking. Princess King He was smiling enigmatically as she said, All of you, sit down. The great Chan Yu likes men. Xiang Shu. Chen Xing cast a skeptical glance at Xiang Shu. Oh, really? Is that true? Princess King He explained to the ones on both her right and left, Has no one heard of the marriage proposals the other day? Xiang Shu took a deep breath. He didn't want to harp on this with Princess King He any further otherwise it would just make matters worse. He asked in a deep voice, where is he? Princess King he said, I've already called him over. Great Chan Yu, sit down and drink some tea first B.A. Tianqi, serve your great Chan Yu for a while. So Chen Xing could only sit down and pour some tea for Xiang Shu. Princess King he said, Tianqi, Chen Xing has always felt that this gang of Hus liked to joke around and would tease him when they had nothing better to do. He was extremely wary of Princess King He, and he didn't know if Xiang Shu came here to ask King He for help in finding someone or to assist in their investigation. Yes. Chen Xing replied. Princess King He said, smiling, have you agreed to the marriage proposed by His Majesty? Chen Xing said calmly, I didn't. Princess King he said, oh? Why not? Please pardon me, us Zion Bay people have always been this direct. The other girls laughed as they stared at Chen Xing. The corners of Chen Xing's mouth twitched. He replied, there are no feelings between us. Princess King he said, but feelings can be slowly nurtured ma. Chen Xing replied, but we'd still have to wait until it's nurtured before mentioning marriage ba. Chen Xing was now quite calm about accepting marriage between two men, and thought he could only use other excuses to shut the mouths of this bunch of hus who disregarded laws and morality and liked to watch rites and music end up in ruins. 
Another girl smiled at King He and said, He has long since had someone, so Yan Ji Yi shouldn't hold on to too much hope. If it were me, I would definitely marry the great Chan Yu too. The girl was talking in the Xianbei language. Chen Xing had learned it from Yuan Xian before so he understood it all, but in this sort of situation, he could only pretend to not understand it. It wasn't appropriate to look at Xiang Shu's expression either. Princess King he replied that girl in the Xianbei language too, he can marry both if he's able to sit in Wang Meng's position, he could marry the great Chan Yu first, then marry Yan Er. Chen Xing. Enough. Xiang Shu finally couldn't continue listening any further. At this time, someone finally came from outside, but Chen Xing heard a familiar voice. The commoner Feng Qianzhen would like to pay respects to your royal highness, Princess King He. Chen Xing. Chen Xing turned around immediately, but Xiang Shu only glanced at the door. They saw Feng Qianzhen standing outside the threshold, afraid to come in. He bowed slightly, then stood with his hands tucked into his sleeves. Chen Xing glanced at him once and almost couldn't recognize him, because today, Feng Qianzhen had specially changed his clothes, which was a change from his usual Jianghu style. He wore a pitch black cage crown and had even trimmed his eyebrows. He had gotten rid of his saber, his complexion was as fair as polished jade, and he now appeared quite stately. Chen Xing almost called out Feng Dage but was stopped with a look from Xiang Shu. Great Chen Yu's looking for you, Princess King he casually laughed, come in B.A. Let's talk someplace else. Yet Xiang Shu got up and said, we'll leave now. Princess King he did not stop them, and only said, His Majesty will be waiting for you to have dinner with him tonight, come back early. Xiang Shu knew that there would be trouble when he heard that. Ever since he entered the palace, Fujian had refrained from mentioning the golden conferment of Purple Scroll and had just let him rest well, so Xiang Shu also did not take the initiative to talk about it. Now, Fujian presumably couldn't hold back anymore and was finally asking for the purple scroll from him. So Chen Xing and Xiang Shu got up to leave. Feng Qianzhen looked up again and cast a glance towards the hall. Chen Xing suddenly realized that within Feng Qianzhen's eyes, he actually saw a little loneliness. Feng Dage. Chen Xing whispered. Feng Qianzhen nodded, then left the palace with Chen Xing and Xiang Shu. All three of them did not speak for a moment. Chen Xing was thinking to himself. He scrutinized Xiang Shu and could not guess his motives, and he found it even stranger for Feng Qianzhen to know Princess King He. While harboring many suspicions, they arrived at a deserted place outside the palace where a carriage was waiting for them. Feng Qianzhen took the initiative to say, I heard about what happened last night. After knowing that the two of you were all right, I was going to ask someone to enter the palace today and make some inquiries, but the great Chan Yu summoned me first. Chen Xing looked at Feng Qianzhen, then at Xiang Xu. Xiang Xu still wore an inscrutable expression on his face and did not reveal even the slightest hint, so he could only ask Feng Qianzhen, Feng Dage, you actually know Princess King He. Feng Qianzhen explained, apart from operating banks, the Feng family supplies rarities to the royal family. Seven years ago, when I came to Chang'an, I got to know her because of a Khan's encounter. Great Chan Yu, since you're the one who asked me to come, please forgive me for speaking bluntly. Xiang Shu interrupted Feng Qianzhen, it's my fault for not being able to save your family's coachman last night. Feng Qianzhen quickly waved and said, the coachman has already received a generous burial, and a lot of money has been given in compensation too. No one wanted something like that to happen. Hearing Xiang Shu with his lofty status care about the life and death of a coachman, Chen Xing felt that his opinion of Xiang Shu did change slightly. Let's talk on the carriage BA. Feng Qianzhen motioned, go to the Songbei residence. Chen Xing, this carriage is too small. Feng Qianzhen, I didn't know that both of you would be around. Well, just make do with this first and squeeze a little. Feng Qianzhen's carriage was extremely narrow. The three of them squeezed in, but Xiang Shu and Feng Qianzhen had long legs, 
so it became so cramped that they couldn't even move. Xiang Shu's lips and nose were sticking to Chen Xing's cheek, while Feng Qianzhen's arm was pressed against Chen Xing's waist. Chen Xing could only half sit on both Xiang Shu's and Feng Qianzhen's thighs that they had each contributed respectively. Why am I the one sitting in the middle? Feng Qianzhen, don't tell me you want the great Chen Yu to sit on my lap. Xiang Shu. Chen Xing, that's strange, aren't you always riding horses? Why are you taking the carriage today? Feng Qianzhen, because I don't want to mess up my hair. Chen Xing, why? Feng Qianzhen, don't ask any more, it's all just upsetting things. The carriage passed Chongkong North Road, and wobbled along the street that Xiang Shu and Chen Xing had returned through last night. Feng Qianzhen said, who on earth ambushed the two of you last night? And how many of them were there? We have very limited information, and only you two were involved. Xiang Shu was practically stuck to Chen Xing's face as he coldly answered, Don't know, one person. Feng Qianzhen asked again, when the guards on patrol arrived, only the corpse of my coachman remained. Why didn't you continue fighting while waiting for reinforcements? Feng Qianzhen knew that with Xiang Shu's kind of status, he definitely wouldn't kill a coachman and was almost certain that the two of them were attacked after leaving Song Bei residence. Wait for the patrol guards. Xiang Shu coldly said, and let them lose their lives on the street too. Chen Xin thought, so that's it. Did he suddenly escape last night because he didn't want the guards on patrol to die? Feng Qianzhen felt puzzled, and looked at Chen Xin again. Chen Xin wondered for a long time before explaining, the one who attacked us was a Yao. Another Yao. Feng Qianzhen was baffled, why are there always Yaos wherever you go? You think I want that? Chen Xing said helplessly, also, aren't you reversing the cause and effect? Xiang Shu said, I summoned you to the palace for another matter. Go underground now, and open the last warehouse door. Chen Xing. Chen Xing had just mentioned it to Xiang Shu that morning, and Xiang Shu now made this tough request to Feng Qianzhen. Feng Qianzhen immediately said, No way. I don't have the right to go in, and I can't get in either. Xiang Shu, okay, then stop the carriage. Chen Xing said at once, What are you going to do? Chen Xing thought that Xiang Shu was going to storm in single handedly and stab Feng Qianyi to death, then slaughter the entire Song Bei residence but he didn't expect Xiang Shu to say, in that case, there is no need for the Song Bei residents to exist. Feng Qianzhen The three of them were squeezed into a small carriage. Xiang Shu wanted to get up, but Chen Xing quickly shifted onto his body and pressed him down. Chen Xing sat in his embrace and tried smoothing things over, talk it out peacefully. Xiang Shu, a fatal disaster will befall the Feng family soon yet they're still being so conceited without any kind of self-awareness. They'll die sooner or later, so I don't mind sending your whole family off along the way. Feng Qianzhen Feng Qianzhen took a deep breath. Chen Xing was scared witless from just listening to him. Xiang Shu had said it straight out just like that. It was silent inside the carriage for a moment. Some words were lodged in Feng Qianzhen's throat, and he didn't utter them for a long time. Finally, with a bit of frustration, he sighed, I have tried to persuade my older brother more than once. Xiang Shu, that has nothing to do with me. Open the warehouse door. Feng Qianzhen said stiffly, and if I don't. Xiang Shu replied, then tonight, Gyu Wang will mobilize the Imperial Guards to banish the Feng family from Chang'an. I've been tolerating you for a very long time, Feng Qianzhen. Don't. Don't, Chen Xing immediately said, don't fight. At the very least, we're friends who have gone through the hardships of living in the wild together. Uh. Feng Dage, I really need. Could you help me think of something? For, for you, that Sen Luo Wang Xiang, un. Chen Xing glanced at the saber Feng Qianzhen carried around with him, the hidden meaning behind his words self-evident, once the mana of the world was restored 
the Sen Luo saber would turn into a magic weapon that rested in the hands of Feng Qianzhen. It would be able to restrict his older brother, Feng Qianyi at the very least, and even if it couldn't, he would still be able to use it for self-defense. Feng Qianzhen naturally understood Chen Xing's hint and wondered in silence. Chen Xing knew that Xiang Shu was not joking. In fact, as long as he requested a search of the Songbei residence from Tuibayan, he could probably get it very easily. However, it would just be a bit difficult to explain to Fujian. Xiang Shu was of high status and had great authority, telling Feng Qianzhen this in advance was already giving him a lot of face. If the Feng family was not undertaking anything else and got searched by the Imperial Guards, it could still be reasoned out. Now though, their wrong lies in the fact that his older brother was up to no good, and if they took just one wrong step, they may just die without a burial ground. So Feng Qianzhen could only say, my Dage will absolutely not agree, but okay, I will think of other ways. I'll do it for the sake of this family heirloom, the Sen Luo Saber. Hopefully, after Mana is restored in this world, I'll be able to convince my older brother and make him understand our responsibilities as part of the Feng family. At noon, Feng Qianzhen invited Chen Xing and Xiang Shu into the Songbei residence. He left, then came back again and explained, after lunch every day, the main shopkeeper takes an afternoon nap. I'll fetch the keys to the warehouse during that time. Xiang Shu looked just as usual and ate lunch with Chen Xing in the Songbei residence. Feng Qianzhen watched Xiang Shu and smiled, Interesting, you're not afraid of me poisoning the food. Chen Xing said, Do you have anything to gain from poisoning it? Xiang Shu, I'm not afraid of poison. Feng Qianzhen. Chen Xing looked at Xiang Shu in surprise and thought, You're even immune to poison? That constitution of yours really is strange. Feng Qianzhen thought about it for a bit, then said, Ever since my sister-in-law passed away, my older brother's personality changed a lot, and he has been hell-bent on revenge for my sister-in-law and two nephews. Xiang Shu, that has nothing to do with me. Feng Qianzhen could only reply, plotting a rebellion is one of the ten abominations, all sins can be forgiven except for the ten abominations. All I can do is advise him, but if he doesn't listen to my advice, what else can I do? Xiang Shu kept silent and didn't answer, while Chen Xing felt disturbed and wanted to explain to Feng Qianzhen. He had consistently been tight-lipped regarding the Feng family brother's plot of rebellion but saying too much would make it seem more like he's trying to hide something too. Finally, Feng Qianzhen said, I just don't understand who leaked the news. Chen Xing hurriedly explained, Not me, I didn't say anything. Feng Qianzhen was caught up in thinking again. It was not until late in the morning before Feng Qianzhen softly and quietly got up, gesturing that he would fetch the keys and for the other two to wait for a moment. He walked barefoot through the corridor and arrived in front of the main shopkeeper's room. Not a moment later, he successfully retrieved the keys. There are only three keys. Feng Qianzhen showed it to Chen Xing, and Chen Xing calmly took it, I'll just be going in to take a look. I guarantee I won't touch your family's things, and I'll return everything to its original place before coming out. Feng Qianzhen then left to send the warehouse guards away. Xiang Shu and Chen Xing waited at one side, and after waiting until everyone left, Chen Xing opened the warehouse door with a key, but it was still seamlessly shut tight from the inside. Light faded in an instant, within the pitch dark warehouse, Chen Xing emitted a warm, white light from his hands. Xiang Shu merely kept his hands in his sleeves as he followed behind. They went down the stairs and once again passed the Cooper Warehouse, Silver Warehouse, and entered the Gold Warehouse. Xiang Shu looked around. Chen Xing explained, this place was where the general administration of the exorcism department was located 300 years ago during the Han Dynasty. We are currently standing in their main hall. Xiang Shu has there ever been a record of the revival of drought fiends in the exorcism department? I don't know. Chen Xing replied, Rumors has it that after the exorcism department disbanded, many ancient records were scattered throughout the world over the years. My Shifu had gathered some in Mount Hua, 
but there are many more that we didn't know the whereabouts of, why do you care about the drought fiends so much? Xiang Shu still did not answer his question. They arrived in front of the final secret door. They had already used all of the keys, and now only one combination lock remained in the middle. This is called the Lu Ban Wheel, Chen Xin pondered for a moment, then said, I studied it before under my Shifu, it's a kind of mechanism. When Fang Qunyi brought me here last night, he thought that I knew nothing about it, but in fact, as long as I can hear the sound, I can discover the trick to unlocking the heavenly stems and earthly branches that are embedded within. There are a lot of boxes at my Shifu's place that use this kind of compass. Enough talking. Xiang Shu pressed against Chen Xing's neck and pushed him to stand before the compass. Unlock it. Chen Xing. For a moment, nothing could be heard in the room except for the sounds of the compass rotating. Chen Xing recalled the sound of Feng Qunyi turning it last night and tried to match it to the positions of the heavenly stems and earthly branches engraved on the compass. Xiang Shu. Chen Xing asked. The white light in his hand only lit up a small area on the compass. Both of them were hidden in the dark. Xiang Shu. Chen Xing, you're obviously called Shulu Kong, why did you say that your last name is Xiang? And why are you called Xiang Shu, not Xiang Kong? What does it have to do with you? Xiang Shu said indifferently. Chen Xing just felt like there were a lot of mysteries surrounding Xiang Shu, why would he pay so much attention to drought fiends? Although Xiang Shu's answer to this question when they met again in Mount Longzhong was just meddling in other people's business, but from the looks of what happened afterwards, it really didn't seem that way. Even his reason for investigating the village that got massacred by the drought fiends didn't seem very plausible. Chen Xing stopped moving instantly. Xiang Shu, continue. Chen Xing straightened his body, pondered for a bit and said, Wait, Xiang Shu, I have one condition. You dare negotiate conditions with me. Xiang Shu clamped down on Chen Xing's shoulders with his fingers, and half of Chen Xing's body instantly felt sore and limp. He quickly said, that's not what I mean. Let me go. Listen to my explanation. I feel resentment behind this door. Chen Xing was almost certain now what he felt the previous time he entered the bottom of the warehouse was not an illusion, there really was something here. He said, I think there's some kind of seal here. Although I still don't know how it's related to Fang Qunyi, he is very likely to be affected by this resentment. Cut the crap. Get to the point. Xiang Shu said. The secret underground warehouse of the headquarters of the exorcism department, don't touch me. Finish listening to me first. Chen Xing said, might have a seal, which can't be dealt with by just fighting. Xiang Shu replied, okay, it's your call. Chen Xing said, although I'm not very sure how to deal with it either, at this time, you need to serve as my protector. Most importantly, you have to ensure my safety. You must wholeheartedly and unreservedly believe in me and listen to me in order for us to deal with the danger. Xiang Shu mocked, don't you always boast about your good luck? Chen Xing said, I really don't know how exactly I provoked you, what bone do you have to pick with me? Xiang Shu, you didn't provoke me, and I have no bone to pick with you either. Chen Xing, so let's discuss this calmly. Is it very difficult for you to be my protector for a while? As long as you are willing, the power that can be drawn from the heart lamp could be much more than what was drawn before. You've seen its effect in Mount Longzhong too. It was recorded in the texts that magic can only be utilized to its utmost when exorcists and their protectors entrust their lives to each other. Xiang Shu, you're trying to coerce me with something like that? Open the door. Chen Xing. Of course not. I'm just afraid that there will be something difficult to deal with inside. Xiang Shu fell silent for a long time. When Chen Xing turned to look at him, Xiang Shu finally said, Okay. Woof. Woof. Wah. Chen Xing was startled by the sudden barks. He turned around to see Feng Yunjun carrying a small dog, Yi. Why are you here? Feng Yunjun said, 
it smelled your scent on me, so it followed me all the way here. It was the dog that Chen Xing had picked up from the road and entrusted to Feng Qianzhen when they arrived in Chang'an. They hadn't seen each other in a few days, and the dog was wagging its tail happily at Chen Xing. Chen Xing carried it and stroked its head. He got such a fright just now that his heart had almost leaped out from his throat. He asked, Feng Dage, when did you arrive? Feng Qianzhen, when you asked the great Chen Yu to wholeheartedly, and unreservedly listen to you. Xiang Shu obviously knew that Feng Qianzhen had arrived long ago. Although Feng Qianzhen's footsteps were rather soft, he couldn't hide from an expert like Xiang Shu. Chen Xing said, I've already unlocked the door, I'll open it right now. Chen Xing took a deep breath and returned the compass to its original position. A click sound came from the inside, the door unlocked, then he stepped forward to push the door. The door didn't even budge an inch. Chen Xing. It must have been closed for too long. Chen Xing turned sideways and leaned against the stone door with his shoulder, then pushed it with all his might. He said, it's jammed from the inside. His feet slipped on the ground when he tried to exert some force, and he said to Xiang Shu, protector. Give me a hand ah. Xiang Shu lifted Chen Xing up by his collar and moved him aside, then extended his forefinger and middle finger, hooked an opening beside the compass and pulled it towards one side. With a loud rumbling sound, the door slid to the left. Chen Xing, oh, it's a sliding door. A dark space appeared inside. Chen Xing raised his hand, and the light from the heart lamp filled the room, illuminating its depths. It was a narrow, dark space, but the woodshed occupied about 10 square meters, so once the heart lamp lit up, everything inside could be seen at a glance. The puppy suddenly felt a little afraid when the door opened, so it turned tail and ran. Chen Xing uttered a cry, quickly walked in, and saw that a shelf on the left side of the room was filled with a mess of broken pieces of bamboo slips, while there were dozens of small boxes piled up on the right. A locked iron cabinet stood in the middle of the room. It's been buried underground for too long. Chen Xing reached out and removed a bamboo slip from the shelf, speaking with his eyebrows furrowed. The storeroom could barely fit the three people who were standing inside, they would even bump into each other as long as they turned their bodies. Feng Qianzhen looked up to inspect their surroundings and said, These must be the relics dug up from the ground when we constructed the warehouse. Can you see? Xiang Shu asked. Chen Xing felt regretful as he handed a bamboo slip to Xiang Shu. Three hundred years had passed, and after being buried in the ground for such a long time while suffering the erosion from running water, the slips were covered in sand and mud, and what was written on them could no longer be read. Just one more step, Chen Xing said helplessly, I was just one step away, my god. Are you sure that as long as the writing can be identified, you'll be able to find what you want? Xiang Shu asked. He clutched Chen Xing's wrist with one hand and lifted it slightly, using him as a lamp to illuminate the bamboo slip in his hands. Chen Xing, at the very least I'll be able to find some clues ah. Feng Qianzhen opened a box. He said, take a look. Within the box was a large lump of heart-shelled items stuck together. Feng Qianzhen broke off a piece it was paper. After paper gets soaked in water and its paste sticks together to form a huge lump, this would be the result when it eventually dries up. Chen Xing struggled a few times to get Xiang Shu to let go of his hand. Xiang Shu threw the bamboo slip aside and began scrutinizing an empty scabbard. What's written on the scabbard? Xiang Shu asked. Chen Xing could recognize the ancient characters on the scabbard written in a seal script the ensnaring nets of life and death bound firm and strong, hoping to be cut by the sword of wisdom. Right in the middle stood a heavy iron cabinet, and there was a black iron lock on the cabinet. Open it to take a look. Chen Xing kept feeling like there was something unusual here. Feng Qianzhen motioned for the other two to move. Just as he was about to draw his sword, Xiang Shu extended his finger, hooked, and twisted and the piece of iron that acted as a connecting lock on the door of the cabinet twisted off. 
Chen Xin was about to illuminate the iron cabinet with his light when Xiang Shu blocked in front of Chen Xin, he held the scabbard with his left hand in a defensive position and pulled the cabinet door open with his right. There was a palm-sized dressing mirror inside the cabinet, while everything else inside was made out of jade. There were even chains carved out of white jade that were wrapped round and round the dressing mirror, and right when the iron cabinet was opened, dark fog started pervading the air. Jade was used to exorcise evil spirits. This is resentment. Chen Xing acted decisively and shouted, Close the cabinet door now. But his loud cry came too late. Once the cabinet door opened, the black fog within burst out with a blast and swept across the entire storage room, wrapping the trio within. Xiang Shu shouted, Get back! Chen Xing felt a powerful suction force dragging him away that was pulling him towards that mirror like crazy. He had just turned around when he got wrapped within a whirlwind and flew up. Xiang Shu pushed harshly from behind, the scabbard leaving his hand, then it got sucked into the mirror. The iron cabinet shook madly and kept rumbling. It appeared just like a monster's huge mouth that was beginning to devour everything around it. Chen Xin clung onto the edge of the storage room door while gripping Xiang Shu with one hand. Xiang Shu shouted, Let go! Don't mind me! Chen Xin looked back and shouted, What did I say before we came in? Feng Yunjun roared, Find a way to kick the cabinet door. However, Chen Xin couldn't hold on any longer. A sharp pain shot through his fingers, so he loosened his grip subconsciously and got swept away by the black fog whirlwind. At that moment, Xiang Shu immediately wrapped an arm around Chen Xing's waist and held him tight, then the two of them got sucked into the mirror. Feng Qianzhen shouted, Guards! Help! Chen Xing! Feng Qianzhen held his saber with one hand and jammed it into the side of the door. He looked back at that strange mirror, and when he looked out again, his pupils suddenly dilated, outside the dark room, leaning against a wheelchair, holding a lamp in hand and wearing a mask that only covered his eyes, he saw his older brother Feng Qunyi who was looking at him from afar. Feng Qunyi revealed a strange expression, showing him a smile that didn't seem like a smile and shook his head helplessly. Feng Qunjun unwittingly loosened his grip, and along with his saber, got swept away by the dark storm into the mirror. End chapter Dingai Fusion Records Chapter 18 Fantasy World Chen Xin was spun around so much that he felt both confused and disoriented. His entire body was in great pain, as if he had been run over by a giant wheel when he passed through the mirror. He just tightly grasped onto whatever he could unwittingly. He could hear Xiang Shu shouting next to his ears, but he could no longer discern what he was. Saying Another loud boom rang out, Xiang Shu held him in his arms, and it seems like he had knocked down an entire wall with his side and back. Another boom, the second wall crumbled, another boom, the third wall fell. Finally, Xiang Shu used his body as a meat shield as they were firmly flung onto one side of a wall, thereby stopping both their momentum and trajectory. With Chen Xing in his arms, they slid to the ground together. Although Xiang Shu was a skilled martial artist unrivaled in the world, getting knocked four times in succession at such a high speed and destroying three walls still caused blood to stream down the corners of his mouth. It took him a long time to struggle to get up. Chen Xing got up and couldn't stop gasping for breath. Chen Xing, your chest is so hard, I almost, fell apart from all the knocking about. Xiang Shu? Are you okay? Xiang Shu? Xiang Shu lay on the ground in the shape of a word. He gasped several times, and his lips looked dark red because of all the blood. Chen Xing looked around him and realized that they were in a garden. The two of them were embracing each other, Xiang Shu had used his back to serve as a shield. From a large residence far away, they had easily passed through several walls as though the walls were dry weeds and rotten wood before finally knocking into the wall in the garden, then they had fallen down. Where is this? Chen Xing wondered. Xiang Shu shook his head as hard as he could and tried his best to sober up. He took a deep breath, then began to frown. Chen Xing quickly went forward, 
examining him as someone who had studied medicine before. He immediately knew that Xiang Shu had broken at least one rib and quickly said, Sit down. Xiang Shu sat on a step outside the large residence. Chen Xing untied his black robe for him, bearing his upper body. He touched the rib that Xiang Shu had fractured and set it for him. Throughout the entire process, Xiang Shu didn't utter a sound. His arms trembled slightly as he looked up at the ash gray sky. It was a cloudy day, and no one was in sight. A strange atmosphere pervaded the air. Resentment is so strong here. Chen Xing felt like the flow of air around him was both bleak and terrifying, as if this place had experienced innumerable wars that resulted in large scale massacres on the battlefield. Your body has recovered quite a lot. After Chen Xing reconnected the rib, he entered a huge residence without even questioning anything. He pulled down a gauzy curtain, tore it to use as a bandage, and tied it around Xiang Shu's chest and abdomen. Compared to the first time they met when Xiang Shu was so skinny he didn't seem human, his muscles were much more distinct now as they had been restored, and his abdominal muscles were as beautiful as a washboard. He had lean pectoral muscles, broad shoulders, and back, and the contours of his body were extremely well proportioned. After the dressing, Xiang Shu recovered very quickly. He put on his martial robe with a severe and cold countenance, but his gaze still seemed a little hazy. Is there anybody here? Chen Xing got up and looked around. This place was too quiet, abnormally quiet. Xiang Shu slowly got up, looked down, and saw the scabbard that had been sucked into the mirror with him on the ground. Chen Xing walked into the residence. He passed through the wall that the two of them had broken through, and when he arrived at the second screen, he saw another screen beside it. A scene of an emperor's carriage setting out on a journey was painted on that screen. Chen Xing looked at it for a while, scrutinizing the seal below it with a face full of doubt. He continued walking in, and Xiang Shu slowly followed along. Chen Xing came to the front of a mirror. Judging by the decorations that they had knocked down and the direction of the bricks that had flown out along the way, this bronze mirror should be the place where everything began. Chen Xing reached out to touch the bronze mirror with his hand, but was stopped. He used his finger to knock on it, a crisp metallic sound rang out from the bronze mirror. The two of them kept silent. The atmosphere of this place was so strange. It's too quiet. Xiang Shu said. No birds were crying, no bugs were calling, and they couldn't hear any noises made by humans either. The only sound that could be heard was some slight rustling when wind passed through the foliage. Look at the people on the screen, Chen Xing motioned for Xiang Shu to look, they're all holding the carriage with their left hands. Xiang Shu stopped moving and stood in front of the screen for a while too. Chen Xing turned out from the front door of this residence, saw a staircase, and climbed up to the second floor. An overcast sky could be seen outside the window. After going up another floor, he arrived at the top floor of the building. Looking out, he suddenly realized that he was actually in the midst of palaces. The magnificent palaces stood in great numbers, and their loftiness would not be outdone by Fujian's Viang Palace. Beyond the palace were crisscrossing streets and lanes, and under the dark sky, they seemed to be swarmed with people. Xiang Shu and Chen Xing stood in front of the balustrade and looked out. This is the world in the mirror, Xiang Shu murmured as he observed the buildings, as well as the words on the balustrade, everything is reversed. That mirror had sucked us in here. Apparently, the top of the building was a place where one could enjoy the cool air. There was a circular fan there, as well as some clothes. Chen Xing suddenly turned around and picked up the clothes, then measured it against his body. Loose robe with huge sleeves, Kajua Shanai. Clothes of the Han Dynasty. A strange speculation suddenly arose in Chen Xing's heart. He walked down the stairs quickly and passed through the garden. A slight drizzle was currently falling with a pitter patter. Chen Xing stretched a hand out and caught a few raindrops, a faint, black vapor emitted from them. He turned into another palace, and the various palace lamps, pottery, blankets, tables, and other decorations confirmed his guess. Viang Palace. 
Chen Xing immediately turned around and shouted, Xiang Shu! Where are you? Xiang Shu said, How do we get back? Chen Xing said, No. Follow me. Hurry. We've arrived at the Chang'an city of the Han dynasty. In the present Chang'an, within the dark room under Song Bei residence. Fang Qunyi took off his mask, put it aside and moved forward in his wheelchair. He took out the mirror with the black vapor curling around it from the cabinet. The black vapor that was curling around the treasure mirror began wrapping around his body, as if it had already become one with him. Fang Qunyi touched the mirror while reciting some words, and the scene of Chang'an's Viang Palace began to emerge within the mirror. Woof! Before anyone could register it, a mongrel rushed over from the side and bit that mirror, then rushed out. Fang Qunyi! Fang Qunyi actually forgot that there was still a dog here. He immediately shouted, Get back here! Get back right now! The dog ran so fast that had vanished within the blink of an eye with the mirror in its mouth. Fang Qunyi could only exert his utmost to push his wheelchair forward to give chase. However, even though he was trying his best, the speed of a wheelchair was limited after all. He had just reached the second level when the dog had already run to the first level with the mirror. When he reached the first level, gasping arduously for breath, the dog and mirror had already disappeared. Fang Qunyi steered the wheelchair out and cried anxiously, Where's the dog? Guards! Help me find that dog! What's the dog called again? As he spoke, he finally remembered what Fang Qunjun called it after bringing the dog home. He said angrily, Quick! Find that dog called Xiang Shu. The dog was wagging its tail all the way as it squeezed out of the dog hole in Song Bei residence's garden and had long since vanished without a trace. Fang Qunyi. Chang'an City in the Han Dynasty. Where are we going? Xiang Shu said, Explain it clearly. We have to find a way to get out of here first. Go to the headquarters first. Chen Xing answered, We'll definitely be able to find the answer in the exorcism department. This is the Chang'an city of the past, so the exorcism department must still exist. Based on the arrangements and seals along the way, this Chang'an should be during Emperor Ai's reign. But after silence fell on all magic, all magic weapons in the world have lost their effectiveness. No matter how godly the treasure mirror was, it should not be able to activate. So how on earth did the mirror suck them in here? Fang Qunyi that damn guy, he had known about this long ago. Chen Xin began looking for a way out of the palace. After leaving Viang Palace, they didn't see a single person along the way. No, in fact, they didn't encounter any living things. Even birds and butterflies no longer existed. Xiang Shu frowned, you said before that all magic weapons are useless now. Then what's that mirror? Chen Xing, that's how it's supposed to be, I don't know why. Suddenly, Chen Xing's voice came to an abrupt stop. Hold on, Chen Xing suddenly recalled the black vapor that winded around the mirror, that is to say. Someone used resentment to activate the mirror's magic. Chen Xing said, this isn't the past, this is the world within the mirror. Three hundred years ago, when this mirror still had mana, it was capable of stone rubbing the present world. That's right. This magic weapon has the power to reproduce the present world without any human beings or living creatures in it. Although Chen Xing didn't understand the operating principles behind magical weapons, based on what he was seeing before him, he could roughly infer why he would arrive in Chang'an city of the Han dynasty after passing through the mirror. Three hundred years ago, this mirror had an abundant amount of mana so it allowed exorcists to shuttle back and forth between their present world and the world within the mirror. But after silence fell on all magic, the mirror lost its magical powers. After that, someone managed to get their hands on it and used the resentment of the human world to refine the magic weapon again. So now, this magic weapon was driven by resentment and currently held the power of darkness. However, the mirror world that it had stone rubbed still remained and it was of Chang'an city on the day silence had fallen on all magic. This is great! Chen Xing exclaimed, This is really great, as he spoke, 
he ran out of the palace gate with Xiang Shu and suddenly felt as if they had passed through an invisible wall. What is this? Xiang Shu felt it as well and asked doubtfully. But before he could turn back, Chen Xin touched Xiang Shu's arm and motioned for him to look. The two of them suddenly fell silent. Wu, Xiang Shu said, that's good, we've finally found where those guys came from. Throughout the entire street, a dense pack of human heads were moving together in a horde, dressed in tattered clothes and emanating a horrifying stench they were all living corpses. All the streets, alleys, and houses of Chang'an city were almost filled to the brim with living corpses. When they heard the noise, all the living corpses turned around one after another, their turbid eyes wide open as they looked at Xiang Shu and Chen Xing. Chen Xing's back was stuck onto the wall outside the palace. He shifted slowly as he said, Yo, there are so many drought fiends. Where did all these drought fiends come from? This is truly incredible. Xiang Shu only held a scabbard in his hand, yet he wasn't afraid in the slightest as he stood in front of Chen Xing to shield him. Protector, Chen Xing immediately said, We agreed on this, so it's up to you now. So Xiang Shu had to cover Chen Xing to let him escape as soon as possible. However, just as the two of them moved, all of the living corpses that packed the streets rushed over instantaneously. Chen Xing shouted, why would there be so many here? Xiang Shu roared, run. But it was to no avail, as there were really too many living corpses. A sea of corpses had immediately surged forth and submerged the two of them in an instant. Chen Xin quickly covered his head and hid behind Xiang Shu. He then felt like the space in front of him had been vacated, Xiang Shu had spun around performing a flying kick as he sent all of the surrounding living corpses that were trying to crush them flying away in an instant. Following which, their vision went black again the horde of living corpses behind them had rushed forth, then it was empty once more. Xiang Shu had pushed back the second wave of living corpses once again. He dragged Chen Xing and began to escape. Chen Xing was staring agape. It was only then did he realize that Xiang Shu's brilliant feats against the Jin army was true. Now that he was displaying the extent of his prowess, his figure was like a whirlwind that kicked away every wave of living corpses that advanced towards them, such that the corpses had no way of getting near them. Hit their heads. Chen Xing shouted, hit their heads. I can't. Xiang Shu roared angrily, I can't free my hands. Are there any in front? The entire street is filled with them. Chen Xing shouted, There are still a lot of. Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu threw the scabbard to Chen Xing and began pummeling the living corpses with both his fists and legs. Unexpectedly, he managed to clear a path while still unarmed. Chen Xing hugged the scabbard and followed behind as he trembled with fear. He carefully counted all of the living corpses for Xiang Shu in detail. All he could see were living corpses swirling in the air. Xiang Shu dragged some along like they were sandbags to use as weapons that he swept across the streets, smashing all of the other living corpses in Thue. 399. 400. Chen Xing shouted, You've hit 400. Xiang Shu, this won't do. There are too many. Chen Xing, can you climb onto the wall? And run along the wall. Xiang Shu, can't get away. It's too crowded. There's no way to rush up the wall. Xiang Shu wanted to display his skills in leaping onto roofs and vaulting over walls, but the venue was too small right after clearing a small patch of space, it would be quickly filled with living corpses once again. He forcibly dragged Chen Xing and wanted to run onto the wall, but Chen Xing shouted, It'll dislocate. Don't yank it like that. My arm will dislocate. Xiang Shu. This won't work. Xiang Shu said, retreat. Chen Xing, I'll think of something. I, can only emit light though. Ah. Emit light. Emitting light will work. Chen Xing immediately lit up his heart lamp, and within an instant, the horde of living corpses in front of him wailed in anguish as they dispersed in defeat. Xiang Shu kept gasping for breath. His ribs hadn't healed yet and were now throbbing sharply. He surveyed the surroundings, then looked at Chen Xing. 
Chen Xing, Aya. This is great. Xiang Shu. Chen Xing had his back stuck to the wall of the house at the side of the street. A glaring light was bursting out from his hand, and wherever it touched, living corpses that acted like they were carps crossing a river would instantly form a crescent-shaped encirclement as they fled in a hurry. The living corpses avoided any area the white light illuminated, just like what had happened in M.T. Long Xiong. Ha! Chen Xing was feeling elated when he almost got punched by Xiang Shu. He quickly ducked to avoid him and wailed, Don't hit me! As soon as Chen Xing avoided the hit, the white light from his heart lamp disappeared, and the living corpse horde roared in a frenzy before closing in on them again. Xiang Shu only wanted to threaten him a little and hadn't intended to actually hit him. He immediately shouted, Emit light! Hurry! Then he grabbed Chen Xing's wrist and forcibly dragged him out to face the living corpses. My hand's gonna break! Chen Xing shouted, Don't be so rough! The light was restored, and the living corpses began fleeing again. Chen Xing, do you feel like killing me now? Xiang Shu. The two of them observed their surroundings. Xiang Shu said, Let's go. Ah. So he half carried Chen Xing as he dragged him forward. As he walked, he suddenly turned around again, and Chen Xing got a fright. What are you doing? You're back. Xiang Shu said impatiently. It was as if the white light emitted by the heart lamp was the natural enemy of the living corpses. Wherever the light touched, the living corpses would avoid it and flee, but once he turned around, the living corpses behind him began flocking toward them again. Are we performing a Sogdian whirl? Xiang Shu was carrying Chen Xing and they would turn around once in a while before turning right back again, as if they were dancing the Sogdian whirl. Xiang Shu, shut up. Chen Xing was being half carried by Xiang Shu as they faced the front, then faced the back, then turned around again back and forth. Do you feel like hitting me again? Xiang Shu, yes. Is there anybody here? A man's voice rang out in the distance, damn it, what kind of place is this? The two of them looked up at the same time and heard Feng Qianzhen's cries for help. Present Chang'an, night had already befallen Viang Palace. Where is he? For the first time in his life, Fu Jian encountered someone who would miss an appointment with him after agreeing to have dinner together. The only person in this world who wow dare miss an appointment with him was the stubborn and perverse great Chan Yu. Did you tell him? Fu Jian asked Princess King He. Princess King He looked baffled, tell him what? I asked him to come over to the palace with Chen Xing at night to have dinner with your majesty just as your majesty ordered. Tuibuyan had also arranged to meet up with Chen Xing today, but he had never showed up no longer how long he waited for. He stood at the side, wanting to speak but hesitating to do so. Go look for him, Fu Jian was beginning to grow a little alert. See if he left the city. On the night they first met, Fu Jian had not yet begun hinting to Xiang Shu about matters before he was subjected to a lot of cynicism and mockery, which made both sides wary of each other. Up until recently, he had often heard the secret reports in the palace the old fogies and youngsters of each tribe swaggered over openly to visit the great Chan Yu, in hopes that Xiang Shu would enact justice for the Hu people. If it was an ordinary day, Fu Jian would have merely laughed it off. However, his subordinates had come forth to report this to him one after another. Coupled with how the great Chan Yu had gone to Mount Song, the gathering place of the Han people, to meet the Feng family who were suspected of plotting a rebellion late at night, he couldn't help but overthink it. Around late noon, Princess King he saw that she couldn't hide it anymore, and in any case, if Fu Jian really wanted to investigate something, no intelligence in Chang'an City would be able to escape him, so she decided that she might as well say, Great Chan Yu and Chen Xing had left with Feng Qianyi's brother, Feng Qianzhen. Fu Jian was stunned, but snapped out of his reverie very quickly. He sent Tuibuyan away to take people to look for them and exhorted, get your men to scout out some information. Sholokong's Han name is Xiang Shu. Don't say you're looking for the great Chan Yu, just in case it ends up causing some unexpected trouble. 
But Fu Jian wasn't afraid that Xiang Shu was conspiring with the Feng family, he just wanted to see what on earth Xiang Shu was up to. The army in the city was in the hands of his trusted aides, the Great Qin had unified the north for a long time, so a rebellion wouldn't stir up too much of a storm, and it was even less likely for Tuo Yan to betray him. Tuo Yan knew that Chen Xing was on good terms with the Feng family, but he was afraid of exposing some kind of inside information. He just wanted to find Chen Xing as soon as possible and persuade him to rein in his horse at the edge of the precipice, so he left the palace immediately and dispatched people to search for them in the middle of the night. In the mirror world, day and night could not yet be differentiated. When Feng Qianzhen was thrown out of the mirror, he landed so harshly that blood gushed down his head. After he barely managed to stop the bleeding, he was besieged by a large group of living corpses. He had seen them once in Mount Longzhou, so he wasn't very surprised and merely turned tail and ran. After he jumped onto the roof of a large residence, he had crouched forward to observe. The living corpses below had already gathered into a flock that looked up at him, yet they couldn't climb up. Feng Qianzhen tried to take the roof tiles off several times and throw them towards the ground like they were little meteors, and they smashed the heads of a few living corpses. However, he was heavily outnumbered and ended up running out of roof tiles before long, if he continued taking any more off, he would end up falling down, so he had to stop and cry for help. Following which, he saw Xiang Shu and Chen Xing hurrying over. Chen Xing was so tired from spinning around that he could only walk horizontally across a wall with his back up against it. Come down! Xiang Shu shouted. After Chen Xing drove away the living corpses below, Feng Qianzhen jumped down and another group of living corpses instantly crowded around them again. Feng Qianzhen shouted, Good job! I'm here! Feng Qianzhen fought his way out hard as he wanted to link up with Chen Xing while Chen Xing and Xiang Shu sped up as they darted towards Feng Qianzhen. Wherever the light went, living corpses were driven away like herds of sheep until they were trampling all over one another as they flocked away. Feng Qianzhen suddenly realized a serious problem. He shouted, Wait wait wait, don't face me. Before he could finish talking, Feng Qianzhen had already been knocked down by the thousands of living corpses that were escaping along the street. Following which, a grandiose group of living corpses ran across the street, crushing Feng Qianzhen as they stepped all over him. Feng Qianzhen. Chen Xing finally arrived and pulled him up from the ground. That mirror, Feng Qianzhen pointed at where he came from. Just as he was about to motion for them to look, Xiang Shu raised his hand to indicate that he need not speak further, and for Feng Qianzhen to follow him and Chen Xing. Chen Xing's head was spinning from turning around so much. He was being overly suspicious now and even had to guard against living corpses that could suddenly rush out from roadside alleys, so he was thoroughly spent. Feng Qianzhen said, Can your other hand emit light? Chen Xing, Ah, yes. Both my hands can. So Chen Xing, with both his left and right hands emitting the heart lamp's light, turned sideways to walk horizontally with one hand in front and the other at the back. Feng Qianzhen, isn't this much better? Can your entire body emit light? That's too tiring. Chen Xing said. Feng Qianzhen suggested, the great Chan Yu and I can carry you. Chen Xing rejected his proposal, my mana will be exhausted very quickly. Even using a very feeble kind of magic can be tiring. So Feng Qianzhen could only drop it. The three of them passed through half of Chang'an city just like that. Chen Xing mentioned his speculations, and Feng Qianzhen said, How are we going to get out of here? Chen Xing, look for clues in the exorcism department BA. Since we can come in, there must be a way out. Feng Qianzhen said, Why is this place filled with such eerie wines? I can practically feel a chill behind my back. Chen Xing said, someone used that mirror to absorb a large amount of resentment. Just as they were talking, Mount Song in the northwest side of the city suddenly appeared. In the valley at the foot of the mountain stood an ancient mansion that has been resting there for a long time. It must be that place for sure. Chen Xing said. 
Yet Xiang Shu and Chen Xing suddenly moved forward from both sides and stood in front of Chen Xing. At the foot of the mountain, several shadows swarmed over and swirled around the end of the long streets and the entrance of Mount Song. The shadows on the grounds were gathering constantly and kept growing in number. Feng Yunjun murmured, and what kind of sorcery is this? Chen Xing suddenly recalled that night the shadow assassin that had hunted down him and Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu said in a deep voice, they're not easy to deal with, be careful. The shadows kept spewing out fog, which then curled up to form a whirlwind. Close to twenty shadows stood up from within the whirlwinds, their human shapes gradually becoming clearer and clearer to reveal soldiers clad in black iron armor. Right in the middle of the entrance at the foot of the mountain, the largest shadow stood up, a general, dressed from head to toe in a suit of iron armor that the cavalry in the Jin dynasty wore, appeared while riding a skeletal war horse. Chen Xing, the assassin from last night. You're certain? Xiang Shu asked. There's no mistake about that. Chen Xing said, I recognize its helmet. Xiang Shu, I'll stall them. The two of you rush in, I'll meet up with the both of you later. Feng Yunjun, you're responsible for escorting him in safely. Feng Yunjun, no no no, Tianke you can emit some light too. Xiang Shu, go. Chen Xing, wait. But Xiang Shu didn't wait for a response before bending over and rushing forward like a cheetah. What you're wielding is a scabbard ah. Chen Xing and Feng Qianzhen practically cried out in a frenzy at the same time, Great Chan Yu. Come back. End chapter.